Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from isradamation.com and welcome to another video from isradamation on Catalan Studio course. And in this video we are going to be talking about Catalium and yet another bold approach from Catalan team to make automation testing much easier for the testing community by releasing this Catalium framework. And once again guys, Catalium is more like a tool or it cannot even be called as a tool, the reason being it is like a mixture of both. So basically Catalium has three different things like it has a Catalium framework which is more like a scaffolding of actual automation framework. It also has a Catalium server which is more like a tool and also has a plugin which can integrate with many different IDEs. So basically Catalium can be called as a tool but it cannot be even called as a tool the reason being it's like a hybrid of everything. So well as that said in this video we are going to be working with Catalium framework and once again guys if you're wondering where this Catalium name has come you should have derived from Catalan and Selenium like you can see the first four letters of Catalan is from Cata which is from Catalan and the Selenium's uh, last four letters is the Liam that's why Selenium and that's how the team has derived this name I guess. So let's quickly talk about working with Catalium framework and understand how things work. Well, as I said, the objective of this video is going to be understanding and working with Catalium framework. So what is great about Catalium framework? Well, Catalium is a framework that provides a blueprint for a test automation project based on TestNG and Selenium. And when it comes to Selenium based testing, Catalan Studio is the software of choice for testers and automation engineers to date. It offers a host of built-in features that simply build test cases for users. However, for users who still need to work with TestNG and Selenium, Catalium framework is a great head start. And tailored to be a lightweight and accessible platform to all users, Catalium retains the standard functions of TestNG and Selenium by leveraging the common open source framework functionality, the learning curve and, and transition efforts are minimized, allowing the users to execute their project better and faster. So you can see that this is the text I have just copy pasted from Catalium documentation. But to make this even more simplified, I have written one more slide, this one. So why Catalium framework? Catalium framework is a bold approach from Catalan team, as I said before, to help community to write a reusable automation test framework from scratch without testers scratching their head a lot. It helps anyone to get started quickly as the Catalium provides a template of course even for pages and test cases that you write. There are a class called page templates and test templates. You can just inherit that and you can start using it and that's it. You can get started with all the page object model code and also all the test ng code in much simpler fashion. Finally, Catalium and Catalium server are open sourced and are available in these below links that you can see in here. That's really an awesome thing again. So if you are thinking to extend Catalium open source project, then you can do that as well. The reason being Catalium itself is free and you can still do that. And the Catalium server, I guess, is the most important tool in this whole Catalium framework because that's where all the magic happens. That's where it communicates with the Selenium server. And also there are many different node modules available which performs a lot of different operations for you. And as I said, some of the features that Catalium gives are these. It gives you a getting started way of working with custom Selenium framework and supports parallel execution, supports working with SAS lab, supports working with Catalan analytics and supports working with page object models and test ng. So this is the most important thing that you can see in here, Catalan really tried to pitch in. So if you want to use the Catalan analytics with Selenium, you probably cannot do it much easier. The only way that you can do it very easily is using Catalan Studio tool. But if you're running a Selenium project, you need to configure so many things to make use of the Catalan analytics. But in here with the Catalium tool, you can directly configure your configuration to talk with Catalan Analytics and you can see all the reports on the Catalan Analytics dashboard, which is pretty awesome. So these are some of the features that you can see 
which takes so much of time for building but using this framework you can straight away start using or build the code in much easier fashion. Well as that said the installation of Catlium is going to be very very straightforward as well. Catlium works seamlessly with VS Code Editor but it is supported in other IDE such as IntelliJ IDE. So you can also use that if you are too much into IntelliJ. But in this video we will be discussing working with Catlium in VS Code because I personally prefer VS Code as one of the most lightweight and very very easy to use tools. So I'm going to be using VS Code in this demonstration and I will show you how to work with the Catlium as well as the Catlium server to write a super simple code. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Visual Studio Code IDE. So before jumping into Visual Studio Code, I'm going to first create a new directory in my C colon. So I'm going to call this as Catalium Demo. And then I'm going to go to the Catalium Demo. And then I'm going to use code dart to open my Visual Studio code. So this way it actually spawns a new Visual Studio code IDE for me over here as you can see. And you can see that this project is kind of very very empty and it has nothing uh, available as of now. So to install the Catalium all you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the extensions and search for Catalium and you can see that it brings you up this particular extension. So all you're going to do is you need to install this Catalium and this way it is going to download the Catalium server for you and it does all the magics for you by installing this Catalium. I have already installed that and I have hidden these two options as you can see in here just for the demonstration purpose so that you can see how it actually looks like. So once I enable this you can see that it creates a new logo here like Catalium uh, and you can also create a project from here, you can create a page create a test case and also you can check in this particular code to the github repository. Pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So the first thing I'm going to do to work with the Catalium itself is to create a new project. So once I hit this create project and you can see that it's building a workspace for me and if I go to this particular explorer right now you can see that magically all the scaffolding coding comes in for you over here which is pretty awesome and pretty straightforward. You can see that we just installed the Catalium and we just click the create new project menu and you can see that everything is coming in for you automatically. And once you click this particular uh, code in the test cases, you can see that there is a parameterized test and a simple test. And once again, the parameterized test is going to be the parameterized test for the test ng. You can see that we are using the at parameters annotation of the test ng and also it shows you the test uh, annotations over here of test ng uh, and it shows you all the code right and with vs code you can navigate to uh, the code so once i uh, click this guy you can see it takes me up to that particular page pretty much like how you do with intellij ide or visual studio ide in c sharp it's pretty much exactly the same way and you can see that it is same page object mo model code that you can see with Selenium. You can see even the same uh, libraries namespaces are being imported in here. But just that there is an additional uh, com.catalon.cata of Selenium page. And if you're interested in looking at how this particular uh, library is going to look like, uh, I'm just going to open a new window here in the edge chrome browser uh, and then i'm gonna search for catalium uh, github uh, you can see that brings me up this one whatever code that you see in here is actually open sourced in here so you can directly go here to the source uh, and go to the kata and you can see it shows you a sample code and also if you go to the uh, to the com if you go to the source and go to the main uh, and go to the java.com.cata you can see the whole source code comes in. So the one code uh, that you are seeing in VS code over here the page template you can see it is coming from com.catalon.cata.selenium of page template. So that's something that you can see over here com.catalon.cata of selenium of page template you can see this is the code. So basically within the page template you actually have this particular source code. 
So this is the code guys. This is how the code has been written from the Catalan team and you can see that over here. And the Catalium server is something that you can start as well. Again, you need to start that. So you can see there is the start server option. So once you click this uh, server, it is gonna start the server and it says start server successful, which is pretty cool. Uh, and now if I go to the uh, localhost 444 server, so you can see that it brings you up this particular uh, Selenium server running behind the scene for you, right? So this is the Catalium server, Catalium server itself, basically. So Catalan team has forked the Catalan server and they have created this particular server for you. Again, the server execution and everything is pretty simple and straightforward in here. Well, everything is done right now. The next thing or maybe the final thing that we need to do is to see this particular code up and running uh, within our Chrome browser or any other browser of our choice. So if I go to this particular explorer, you can see there is something called as custom browser. You can even use that. And also uh, you can choose the browser if you want. Uh, so basically you can see there is this Kata browser like Chrome, Firefox, uh, IE or Safari. Uh, you can specify that. And there is something called as Kata project ID. So don't worry about these things. We are gonna be talking about that in our next video. But as of now, you can see these are some of the configurations that you can do to override uh, some of the changes of the uh, default browsers and stuff. But as of now, just don't worry about this default properties. Uh, I'm just gonna run this particular code in my uh, terminal and I will show you how it looks like. So in order to execute this code, all we're gonna do is we need to have a Maven installed within our machine. So I have already installed Maven, so I'm just gonna do a Maven of clean of test. So once I do that, it should able to uh, spawn a test for me. So let's just make this terminal a little bit bigger in here. So you can see that it is kind of uh, compiling the project and it is gonna run the test suite for us over here. So you can see that it is uh, opening the listener and it is now running the default Chrome browser for us over here. And then it is gonna run the test for me. So you can see that this is the first test it is running. It's choosing the daytime picker, and it entered some values over there and then it is running the second test for us. And then the test got successfully completed. So now we'll be wondering where this test is actually running and what test ng which is being used for this particular uh, test execution. So you can even see those details if you go over here. We have something called as the resources and testng.xml file. So this is the one thing uh, which was used to execute this particular test. And if you want to run the test ng parallel, you can do that as well. And again, in order to use which XML file, you're gonna specify that in the palm.xml file. Uh, if you just go over here, you have this test ng.xml file. Uh, so let me change this to test ng of parallel dot XML. I'm just gonna save this guy. And now hopefully as we expect what should happen, you should choose the testng-parallel.xml file and it should open two browser for us, I guess. Uh, let's see what's gonna happen. So it is initializing two browsers, the two web driver has been initialized, like there is one uh, Chrome browser here and there is one Firefox browser here. You can see that these are like two browser guys and two tests are running in two different browsers same time automatically and it has completed the test pretty quickly. That's it guys. These are something which everybody are actually looking for while developing a framework and Catalium is the framework which does all the magics for you behind the scene. And again, building this framework and how the code has been developed is all a different story here. But if you want to really build a framework from complete ground up of working with parallel execution and creating some reportings and all those custom reporting stuffs, those things I have discussed in my other courses in Udemy as well as in YouTube. You can watch those videos for building it from the scratch. But if you want to use something like a ready-made and start using it for your project pretty quickly, to gain the benefit out of it, you can probably use this framework, like Catalium framework, which is tailored for everybody to use it like a custom framework, gain the benefit out of it. In our next video, we are gonna be changing some of the code over here, and also we'll discuss how 
Catalium can communicate with the Catalon analytics and how the reports are going to be generated. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.